Welcome to 502 Conversations. I'm Brian Kirby, and my guest today is Mark Edward. And I wrote, I know much information, but I wrote it down because I really want to give you your props, I guess as they call it. Is that a okay. Hollywood term? Yeah. Mark Edward is superstar psychic, or I should also say famous psychic friends network superstar. You've yes. been described as that, correct? Yes, I have. Psychic to the rich and famous. Seancer, author, numerous TV appearances on shows such as A&E's Biography, mm -hmm. correct? NBC's The Other Side, The Learning Channel's Exploring the Universe, and Penn and & Teller's Bullshit. And I, can I say debunking all of the above? Because above all, you're an expert cold reader and performer. Is it safe to say that? Or how would you like well, me to phrase that? Well, I, I don't like the term debunker. Let's okay. just say I'm an in investigator for the truth. All right. You, okay. Investigator for the truth. Yeah. All right. I like that better. I just heard you speak. Yeah. Do you mind if I quote some stuff back at you? Oh, please. Because go ahead. then you can explain it. Then um, I can maybe, you, I hope I can explain it. Yeah. Well, sure. it's interesting because, well, let's talk a little bit more about your profession. So you okay. are a performer. You consider yourself yes. a performer. Okay. Let's talk about the 900 business because it's kind of fascinating to me. Yeah. That whole, was it the 80s where that was really booming in the uh, late 80s, early 90s? It was 90s? like mm, late 80s. It died out by, well, it's still happening, but it really was maybe 95, 96 it died out, started to die out. Well, they, a lot of them got sued and went out of business. So I, re I remember those late night TV commercials. Yeah, where call I did the, one. Oh yeah, call <laughs> the one nine hundred line. Your yep. personal psychic is yep. waiting for you, kind of thing. And there was yeah, a, there was a famous somebody that was on Psychic Friends Network. Psychic Friends Network. It was yeah, a huge, we won't mention her name. Okay, it was a huge <laughs> nine hundred business. Yes. Um, mm. And they always offered a free reading, though. If you call, right. you get a few minutes free or something like that. No, that was a scam. All right, please explain. Enlighten. To... Well, actually, before we get too far into it, Mark has this book out. Psych... I can hold this up. Look right? at all those bookmarks. My goodness. Psychic Blues, because I'm not psychic. I need to. Yeah, yeah. Psychic Blues is his book, and the subtitle is Confessions of a Conflicted Medium. And we'll get to that part, actually, because okay. it's, it's interesting. Good. It's very interesting. And I just made bookmarks in case I need help. Okay. Um, so back to the 900 business. First few minutes free, and now you're saying no? No, what it was is that was a scam, because what would happen is you would, you would dial the number, and then you would get a switchboard. And the switchboard would say, hi, we're the Psychic Friends Network. Uh, what kind of reading would you like? We have tarot readers. We have aura readers. We have pet psychics. We have ghost hunters. They give you this huge list. And then they'd say, if you want a tarot reader, punch nine. So you'd punch nine. And then it would say, they'd start giving you a list of the people who are working those hours, right? So by the time you finally got to the reading... Wait, wait, three minutes was over. You mean when the phone clicked on, that the time started then? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. That's one of the reasons they went out of business. Because, because people said, no, I want my money back, or they wouldn't pay their phone bill. Because if they, if they, said, if they thought they were getting a three, free three-minute reading, they would be willing to pay three ninety nine for that three minutes, but they'd get a bill for like $50, and they'd just say, no way, I'm not going to pay this, see? So, all right. Wow. Okay. It was a little underhanded. There I know, were a lot of things they did like that. Well, I know that was in the past, so I guess I won't. It's, it was. It's fascinating, so I won't. Talk now it's worse. No, well, that's what I want to go on to. You said that of the nine hundred business, that compassion and empathy were both in very short supply. Are you saying only in the nine hundred business or in the psychic business? Well, the, that particular chapter was about the 900 business, and, yeah. but I would say that overall, in my experience, and I always like to make that clear, this was my experience, it may be different for anybody else who, who was in that sort of world, uh, yeah, I would say that there, there was not a lot of compassion. It was a lot of greed and uh, a lot of uh, just not much spirituality or metaphysical things going on there. It was based on greed. Okay. And you know what? We've jumped right into it. So let me ask you, just can you explain a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so Mark Edward, psychic to the superstars or superstar psychic. Right. What do you do? 
What do I do? Yeah, I know what you do, and I'm, I've jumped it right into this, but would you like to just explain to me? Well, what, what I do is I'm a performer, okay? That's number one. That's where I'm in my zone, okay? So I've been a magician. I've worked, uh, and through magic, I got into a branch of magic called mentalism, which is now very big. Uh, back when I started, it was, uh, it was a... Uh, kind of a novelty was different oh. than other than other magics other forms of magic and through uh <clears throat> mentalism i started to do uh, seances for entertainment they weren't supposed to be based on anything real they were an entertainment like a play uh, i would ask people to pick a famous a movie star or an actor or a, a, a somebody uh a famous uh, either a celebrity historical figure and I would put together a seance about that person. You mean you would know this in advance or people would come to see you? No, you, they you'd... would they would they would plan a party okay. around the seance. So you had a... and I would say to them, you know, the first question because most of the time when people hear about a seance, they really don't know what to expect. So they'd hear about it and they'd call me up and they'd say well, we'd like to do that for this such and such a party. And then I say, okay, the first thing is, who do you want to bring back? And they'd say, oh, yeah, I guess we need to decide that, don't we? And I would say, yes, I, you know, but I want to make it clear that I'm doing this for entertainment and I'm not, I'm not going to bring back Uncle Bill, your, you know, because you want to find the will that he hid away or something like that. It's not a, that kind of seance. It's a, a Victorian-style seance based on a recre recreation of that era, you see. So in doing that, as I did it, uh, I started to become aware that, you know, people would say, well, do you read palms as well? Or can you do my tarot cards? And that sort of got mixed into it. People kind of started to expect that and the character of the medium. For example, if I did a seance and they'd, they'd say, uh, well, can you read my palm? And if I said, no, I don't do that, then it was kind of like, it took away from my credibility. So I decided, all right, I'm going to dive into this psychic thing. Even though as a magician, I know that it's an artifice. It's a, it's a tool, okay? And as I did that, I became fascinated with how people reacted to it. And they were just, it didn't matter. They didn't care about the magic tricks anymore. They just wanted to know about themselves. So... What do I do? Well, those years I, I studied human nature for many years that went into that book. I studied how people react, why they want the things they want, in my opinion. May I interrupt you? Yeah. Because it's a conversation, so I need you to explain some no, things. No, please go like, ahead. Did you, uh, two things. It's interesting that if somebody asked you, could you read my palm, and you said no, you lost credibility. Yes. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yes. No, it is. But <laughs> so you lose credibility because you say you don't know how to do something. <laughs> well, in, in the guise of a medium. I got, yeah, I understand. You're expected to know certain things. And one of them is occult knowledge. Yeah. You know, if I said, if they said, can you read my palm? And I said, no, but I can do a balloon animal. All right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It just didn't work out. Not that I did balloon animals. They, they, they would have, have to have been possessed balloon animals, but you know where I'm going. See? Yeah, yeah. So, so it became apparent to me that, you know, people really, really like this stuff. And I wanted to understand why. And so and, well, well, I stopped you at you were, became, you were, um, started studying human nature. Is yeah. that something you actively studied or were you just really great? All, there was just something about you that you were able to study it through the course of your work? Or did you actively read books Both. on psychology? Okay. Both. I think that what it was is I realized the potential that I really love people. I really love talking to people and listening to their stories. And to give somebody my opinion and have them be so happy about it was kind of, kind of a pleasant experience. It was like, gee, I don't need to do the four ace trick. This person's happier with me just telling them what the tarot cards say. And, and that was a revelation to me. But I also, I like the idea that two people could have a, this sort of psychodrama conversation between the two of them. But what I didn't like was the mumbo jumbo part of it because I knew that was bullshit. And I didn't like that. So because explain mumbo jumbo, what do you mean? Mumbo jumbo is, oh, the spirit world oh, okay. and, 
and uh, you know I'm able to communicate with your dead ancestors and all this. That was that was never part of the deal for me. It was entertainment, but it was hard to convince the sitters who had had a really genuine experience in my shows that it was just entertainment. So that's why the book is called Conflicted Medium because my conflict was if I did, I'll give you an example. I had to learn that when at the end of my seance, if people applauded, I didn't do a good job. Oh, they should be stunned, you mean? They should be stunned. They should, their mouths should be hanging open like that. Now that's that's a big change from doing a rope trick in the magic and in, in, in magic, and then you actually coax the audience. Ta da! You know, I always hated that, coaxing the audience to give you applause. So to me, it was much more satisfying, and also, magic on its own to me has no reason to happen. I use the example of if I take a red handkerchief and I put it in my hand like this and it comes out green, it's like. So, it's, it's clever and it's nice to look at, but with seance and psychic things, it, has a lar it refers to a larger referential universe, meaning the unknown, you know, the what ifs, the ghosts. Everybody kind of has a little bit of interest in that, even if they're a diehard skeptic. They're like, they'll listen to you more than if you just go, and your card was the three of diamonds, you know, just. It's different. It's a different feeling. The word performer you used several minutes ago and the part about the seance, it's, it's really just struck me because I'm a musician, former yeah. musician, I guess. Yeah. And um, most people don't like jazz, but I'm a jazz musician. Apologies. Yeah. One oh, of the highest jazz. compliments you could get is if you played a ballad yeah. and the room was silent. Exactly. Nobody clapped. That's right. It, that, or there was a hesitation. Yeah. You know. And you understand what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. I it's just that moment. Never, it's also the same moment. You think I moment. got them. Yeah. It's also that same moment when you're in a movie theater and the lights go down. And there's that moment of anticipation. And in the seance room, when the lights go down and everybody's linking hands, very powerful moment. Because everybody's anticipating something that will happen, but they don't know what it's going to be. And, the, and music can do that too. Music is, it involves your emotions and you can become so emotionally swept up in it that you're silent. And that's, that's what I crave. I mean, if I, if I kept going on with people applauding, I would have stopped doing it years and years and years ago. It's interesting, and I'm not flattering you, so don't take it this way. Oh, but, go ahead. No, I don't no. But that's the, it's more, it's like an art. It's an artist. Yes, it is. You're concerned, of, that's what you're striving. Yeah, well, I am an artist. Right. I, my my right. degree is in art. Oh, and my back, physical my, art. Yeah, my, bio, my background is, uh, is I have a, a, a degree in art, and uh, my mentor was John Baldessari, who was a uh, conceptual artist, and uh, so a performance art. Back in the 70s when I was going to school, that's what I did. But, no kidding, performance art. Yeah, but I found that I could not make a living at it because right. it, was, it was abstract, crazy, dada surrealism. And, you know, very few people were able to make a living. But fortunately at that time, and I literally was starving when, by the time I got to the middle of my art school career, I had to find a way to put food on the table. So I started doing magic, which is something I did when I was a kid. All right, we've really, this is what happens in my conversations. You'll say something, I'll ask a Leads question. Leads to something else? I apologize. Okay. So you actively studied human nature. Well. And you <laughs> were good at understanding people. Yeah, passively. but they understood me too. Okay, so let's go back to, you actively studied human nature yeah. to be a psychic. Right. Okay. I don't know where we were when we well, said but see, that. Here's the thing. Wait a second, though, because w I think we have to define what a psychic I'm, is. I'm so glad you just said that because I was going to yeah, ask. Because but, so I what mean, is a psychic? A psychic is like an art. Art is whatever you can get away with. That's so I really feel that way. And magic is whatever you can get away with. And psychics are whatever you can get away with. It's, it's a form of performance that teases the audience to try and draw a line on what is real and what is not real, what either or. It's my, my mentor taught, taught me this, this or this. 
That's what conceptual art is. Is it this or is it this? And magic is, is it real or is it not real? And psychics is, is it real, is it not real? Tension. Jazz. Improvisation. It's real. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people hear it and go, that's nervous music, oh, you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking it's about. It's a lot of notes played fast. I yeah, hate yeah. That. And that's how they represent it in movies. And so. Exactly. So, I mean, it, it, it's the ears of the beholder and finding the right set of ears, that's all. Or eyes. Um, is it real? Is it not real? This or that. This or that. But one of the things that's so fascinating is that you can know it's not real, but not know how it's done. So right. be amazed by it. But, that's but that magic. doesn't mean you're giving in to it. So that's magic with a C. That's... Magic you go with in, a C? Magic, there's magic with a C and there's magic with a K. All right. Magic with a K is the old ways, you know, the pagan magic and the Celtic magic and the, the, the witches and the goblins and all the things that make magic something more than just a, a, a clown act, you know? So I think there's different kinds of magic. And I try and, like, fuzzy the line in between the two. You, fuzz, you intentionally fuzzy the line? Yeah. Okay. I, I want that because that's the, that's the balance beam. That's the, that keeps this thing going back and forth. If it's, if it's all a big joke, nobody will take it seriously. If it's humorous but still it's like, well, you know, a lot of the things he did was a trick. But that one thing, I'm not sure about that. That's what interests me, see. Um, let's get back to what that all worked out for, for you, if, okay. that's, if that's a good sentence. Okay. So you worked, I mean, please, uh, it's a great book. It was an enjoyable read. Thank for you. For the inside information. But also, it was great to hear somebody talk about how hard they worked yeah. at it and the hours. And it's a job. Oh, yeah, that was you a worked job. a lot. No kidding. It was well, a job. You know, a lot of and people. And I actually, you know, to confess, I probably became an alcoholic because of that. Oh, I oh, didn't. Yeah. Oh. It's not really in the book. See, I have to remember one thing about the book. I wrote an original manuscript, but I couldn't sell it to a publisher because pub the publishers, all of the ones, not all of them, but most of the ones I took it to said, we don't, we don't do fiction. I was like, they this didn't isn't fiction. It. Yeah, they didn't believe it. It was, was so good. They thought it was... Well, not good. It was just crazy stuff that really happened. So, and during that time, uh, well, what happened is the editor edited about a third of the book out. And the third of the book that he took out were like, what was going on in my personal life during this time? And a lot of the things, I mean, I was drinking like crazy to try and numb my guilt because I knew what I was doing was wrong. I'm glad we're getting there. Yeah. So that, that had a lot to do with it. So, and we're talking in the 900 days? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, a little bit after that. I think it was after I, after I was ready, I felt like I really had all the information that I needed to write the book because my whole intent in the beginning of getting involved with the 900 thing was to, how can I put it? scam the scammers. So wait, so you're saying that the entire reason you did this work was a long-term project? Research project, yeah. Really? Yeah. So I, I'm sorry to say I, really. I, no, I, I did make some money, you know, I did, not a lot, but the point was I wanted, you cannot, you cannot infiltrate, you cannot go to a psychic and say, show me how you did that. They, they'll just go, well, I'm a psychic. I have, I'm gifted. So you have to infiltrate and you have to kind of get to this point where they nod and wink at you like they're kind of like. And then you start to share secrets with them. And then they start to say, oh, you're one of us. It's kind of like being in the carnival. A carnival won't accept you if you're an outsider. But if you have a couple misspelled tattoos or you're kind of like Spelled. one of them, you know, then suddenly they embrace you and they start sharing their secrets. So I infiltrated that world. I, I went in there and I used mentalist techniques, which most of them were not familiar with, to convince them that I was the real thing. See? Oh, undercover. Then. I, I get that. Yeah. Okay, now I understand that part. Yeah. Um, but I, 
the chronology I got a little bit confused on. So you were also doing private parties as entertainment. Yes. Is that, was that before or after? Cause that was during the same time. During the nine same time. Nine years, basically nine years, which is a long time to do research. But And that's part of the conflicted... Well, it was, but it was necessary because I, I hadn't reached the point where I w was able to say, okay, I think I've got enough now. It, it really took a while. I had to do celebrity parties. I had to work with lousy agents. There's a chapter on agents in there. You know, there's, there's this whole ball of wax that is kind of the Hollywood thing. And, and I really wanted to explore each of those and get, get a good, good read on each one of those things. And you just said it was nine years of research, About nine so nine years, speak. yeah. Um, the guilt came from... Just I mean, nine I guess I, years. Nine years of, it's living a lie. So what are you, the only, you can't, did you meet other psychics, I'll use the term, yeah. that felt the same way as you? No. So in all this time doing the research, nobody winked at you ever and said, you know. We're, oh, no, many people gave me the, it's called in the carnival business, it's called with it. With it means that, like, if you go to the carnival and you are, walking down the, the midway, and the guy's going, two balls for a dime, come on, buddy, bring your girlfriend over here, throw the balls. Well, it's a, those games are made to earn money, and yep. they're scams. But if you go up to the guy, and he's giving you the hard sell, and you say, with it, that's a code word that says, leave this guy alone, he's one of us, right? So psychic business has the same sort of thing. They're not exactly code words, but there's words like shut eye. Yeah. There's words like, you know, there's buzzwords that if you say them, people go, oh, he's not a believer. He's just playing the game like we are, see? And once you turn that key in a few doors, it opens on to bigger doors and bigger and bigger because the big fish are all con artists. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to say that again. What? Exactly what you just said. The one, no, the big fish. The big fish are con artists. Okay. <laughs> Duh. I mean, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but you know. I think you're over here. <laughs> if if you've got a real psychic, let's uh, let's change science overnight, okay? Let's uh, let's take. Uh, okay, you can talk to me now. <laughs> let's take it. Let's take it to the next level and and, no, and I, show the world. It's. So, <laughs> Are you confused? No, I'm not actually <laughs> confused, but I just don't know where to take it because... Well, think and, about and it. And people, there's the with it term. Yeah, with it. Uh, were there other... Well, let me ask this question. How many people, in your estimation, this is probably a terrible question to ask, but in all these travelings, you've met hundreds of psychics or people that work, that's their job. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me <clears throat> what you think about people that really believe it and think they're helping people? Or is there any such thing? Well, did, did, you didn't hear what I said about that in the lecture today? Here, I, no, actually I did, I, but I'm thinking of this whole thing. Okay, well the only way I can really divide that up Let would me ask be a, a pie graph, okay, a percentage. But I want to say, and I always preface by saying that this is my experience. Somebody else may have a totally different experience. This is mine. So take it as you will with a grain of salt or whatever. 95% of the people who I experienced in my research were total charlatans who knew that what they were doing was bull and they were going ahead and doing it to make a living. Now, 5% I split into two, 2.5 and 2.5. 2.5 were what I call people who are deluded you know, they may have been uh, off their medication, you know, mild schizophrenia. Schizophrenics hear voices, tell them things. And if it's mild, they can be quoting scripture or whatever. And you pass that goodness on and you, a schizophrenic can think that they're genuinely gifted, okay? There's that. The other 2.5% are nice empathic, compassionate people who feel that they are intuitive and they're able to share that with other people. Now, that said, 
the 2.5 does not offset the 97 point. What would it be, 98.5%? Yeah, something like that. Well, so that's the balance. So, so that's why it's conflicted because, and it's called psychic blues, is because the blues is, why can't we just have that good part and not have the, the greed and all of that? Well, even the good part is still, what's good about it? I mean, I guess the person what's that's good deluded about it, is, thinks good they're about helping it is people. What, is what any marriage counselor, any priest, or any, uh, any uh, uh, therapist who, who is not a, not a, a grief vampire or a, a manipulator, they're there to help. Okay, so the two and a half percent, okay, I think I understand. And so they're they, out there. They, they're, they're think, they're, they're, they they're, are helping, I they're met, trying to I help. I met a few people who are genuinely wonderful, warm human beings, but not enough for me to be able to say, go to a psychic. But let me ask you a question about these two and a half percent <clears throat> yeah. that are warm and wonderful beings. Mm. They weren't psychic, they weren't using supernatural powers, they were... However, they well, were. Well, they might have thought of some of it as being uh, well, divine intervention or a gift from somewhere they don't know where. I mean, there's a whole spectrum of of ideals that people think this stuff comes from, you know. And some of them question it, some of them don't. They just say, "I accept it. I was able to help you. Goodbye." But they don't try to get a hook in you. The good ones don't say, "Oh, by the way, you're coming back next week, aren't you?" That goes for therapists, too, you know? Yeah, okay. Therapists take their book out and go, so what time are you coming next week? They're no different. So if we bring it back to performing, I mean, there are certain levels of musicians that some people just <clears throat> have it, and they haven't studied That's it. That's right. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And it's very annoying to hear somebody say, oh, I don't know where, it, it's just a gift from God. I, there is a lot of practice involved in that. Well, but, but they don't did you ever see Jimi Hendrix play live? I've never seen him live, no. I did. <laughs> and he I saw, practiced I saw a lot. Keith Moon, and I saw, I saw musicians in the 60s that were, they just blew. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Miles, they played all Tony the time. Tony Williams, Miles Not, Davis. Miles, but they practiced a lot. But the point is, that was, that was their way of communicating that gift or whatever okay. it is. Um, you mentioned... Uh, the, the shortest chapter in the book is on the mediums that are right. psychics. You have a special place in your heart for mediums, <laughs> uh, apparently. Yes, it's the ninth ring of hell in my heart. I, uh, I call them grief vampires. And you really differentiate them from the psychic that gets the, the hook in. Yeah. No, a medium gets the hook in, too. Right, but what I'm saying is you <clears throat> still think a medium's worse than the psychic that says you're coming back next well, week. And what is the difference? I guess I would say that. Well, all... I mean, how can I put this? All mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. Does that make any sense? I, if you define psychic okay, again, all, so you're not all, telling me they're all supernatural. No, I'm saying that all... Mediums say they're psychic. In other words, they say that that they can talk to dead people, but they can also read tarot cards and oh, tea leaves and all this. Okay. But not all psychics are mediums. I, okay, I understand that. Not all mediums will say. A lot of them will go, "Oh no, I don't touch that dead that dead person." A lot of psychics don't. Yeah. So the mediums, to me, take it to a limit that I find reprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say, you know? I mean, but, uh, come on. All right. You talk to dead people? What is more likely? I, uh, that, they're, that they're very clever at, at pretending or they can really do it. That's, no, the, that's the this or that. I got, you don't get in between. I get it, but <clears throat> there are psychics that aren't mediums that are very clever and get the hook in and take people that's as true. well. That's true, so but why they would a medium doing it be different than... Because a medium sp uh, specializes in saying that they're getting their information from your dead grandmother or your child that's been murdered or your missing, missing teenage girl or whatever. And so they, they dig in deeper. It's a deeper hook. Oh, it's a, it, it becomes a more emotional connection? Absolutely. To and so if, a, if you go to, I guess, a standard psychic and you're concerned about money or your love life, yeah. and they can throw Deal out... Deal the cards out, ah, you'll be fine, goodbye. But <laughs> if somebody comes to your door and says, 
oh, your daughter's been missing for a week. I can help you find her. That is offensive, yeah. Yeah. That's wrong. And, and I never did that. And if people said, can you do a seance? You've never done that? No. The closest I came to that is somebody brought a photograph to me one time and told me, what can I tell them about the photograph? And I did it, but I felt really uncomfortable. And it turned out it was this guy's guru anyway, so it didn't oh. really matter. <laughs> he wasn't dead or anything, you know. But I just said, I don't want to do this because it was improvising on a level that I felt very uncomfortable with. And it put me in this realm that I just didn't like that. I didn't want it getting around that I, that I talked to dead people because that's a whole other thing. So it, it's not intuitive. It's bullshit. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's a difference. Is there? I mean, but, yeah. I mean, when I you, mean, I understand <clears throat> when you say that would be the lowest of the low. Yes. But you, but people get hooked on <clears throat> weekly readings to say, should I approach my boss for a raise this week? Should is now the right time to yeah, ask my girlfriend true. to marry me? That's they become true. emotionally involved in that. Yeah. Um, but that's not I, as I totally bad as get your where, murdered daughter. No, I or, totally understand that part of it. Um, like Sylvia Brown told people that their, that for, they told, she told people that their murdered child would be found when they weren't, or she told them, or that she told them that their murdered child, that their child was dead when they were later found alive. That's wrong. And she told people whose children were a lot, told people that their children were alive when they turned out to be dead. That's wrong, because there's there's no ex, there's no there's no getting out of that. But she went to her grave highly regarded by people that believed as totally accurate. And it's yeah, but she you is know what? There's not false. that many people. <laughs> if oh, you okay. really if you really look at her Wikipedia page and and you know there's a handful of people. There's not. It's not okay. Good. So this is a totally separate issue, but um, you'd think that. We'd be smarter. No, we're not, and we're dumber than we ever have been. We're in the golden age of the con. Look around. Look at the president. I'm sorry, but, you know, I mean, he's the biggest con artist we've ever well, seen in this country. Well, politicians in general can, can yeah, convey but there's that, that. I got it. It's another level now. It's disgraceful, and it's, it, there's no integrity. That, I don't want to get into okay. it. Okay, yeah, we don't need to go there, but... He is the... the he is the ultimate manifestation of what is in psychic blues. So do you think that... People want answers? Now we got one. I mean, I probably, maybe you can't answer this question, but, um, you know, there are a lot of things we understand about the world. Do you think that, that we, we need to, or not we, not myself, but do you think some people just can't, they'd rather have fantasy than reality? I mean, Of they, course. I mean, it's just strange to think that you could fly here to a convention and then fly back and visit your psychic you know that they seem in conflict to me in general and i can I, see doing it as a party trick like i've seen yeah well, i don't know if you know are you familiar with banachek sure uh, he yeah. has done a mentalist show here which was right. you know i know it's a trick but i right. don't know how it's done it's fascinating right it's interesting. you don't base you, your I, life on what banachek no tells not you. at all but that's my point <laughs> why would anyone do that well they don't that's the difference between a mentalist and a psychic a mentalist oh, okay all a right. mentalist is in a in a proscenium arch. So a mentalist is not a psychic. It's considered no. a trick. No, a mentalist is a performer that generally performs in a venue like a stage or a convention uh -huh. where he is given t time on stage. He's not asking you to come to his... All right, he can do it to one person probably. Mentalism? Yeah. Yeah, oh sure, but the point is he's not trying to get you to believe in him. He's not trying to get a hook in you. That's a show. It's a show, and he's, when he's done with you, he's done with you. If you want to buy his book, fine, but he's not out there to try and get you to keep coming back and coming back and filling his pockets forever. So let's get back to the blues then, because doing this research, you needed people to come back. So you needed to hook people. Mm -hmm. You didn't need people to come back. No, because there's an endless supply of people. There, there wasn't like I was ever needy. If I, if I was doing the 900 thing, that phone would ring. Sometimes I did nine-hour shifts where the phone would continually ring. I could not put the phone down. And to put that in perspective, do you have any idea how many people worked simultaneously? At one point, they had 1,000 people working. 24 hours a day? 
Yeah, but if you averaged it out, there'd be a thousand people working at any one given time, and well, no, wait, not not at one given time. Everybody had shifts. Okay, so let's. But they had a thousand to, people. So let's say there they were, made seventeen million dollars in one year. Wow, profit. That's incredible. That's yeah. a lot of phone calls. Yeah, it's a lot of fraud. Is what it is. Well, it's interesting <laughs> that that's what I don't understand because sometimes you you in fact. Earlier today. I'm not a millionaire. Look. No, no, no. I got it. <laughs> you, what are you going to tell me that you're talking to me? <laughs> so um, you said earlier today, it's all a ruse. Yeah. You came right out and said that. Of course. But then sometimes I thought I read in your book that you would say things like, I'm not psychic or am I? Or Well, that's because when you get into that, that world, you start, that's the, the very important point. You can start to take yourself seriously. And it, 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 it hinges on whether you have a conscience or not. You, you, know, you start to get letters where people are saying, you know, you're, you're a gifted, you know, God's given you this gift. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, you read it and you're like looking at your bank account and going, well, you know. But I was a, brought up as a magician, so, excuse me, I frequently had to stop myself and go and watch the movie Nightmare Alley. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't but it's seen mentioned it. I, in the book. Yeah. And basically, that was my, that was my come down. That was like I'd watch it and go, "All right, go back to, back come, put your feet back down on the earth," because the, basically it's a story of somebody going all the way to the top and going all the way to the bottom at the end. So you're again, you're this is the artist, the performer thing. I mean, once you get to a certain level, and people they flood you with, you can't do any wrong, yeah. and everyone's following you oh, around, yeah. and you start. If you're a, uh, a TV star or an actor, I shouldn't say or, but if you're yeah. an actor yeah. or a musician and you have people that just, once you get a certain amount of praise. momentum, it's praise. people are behind you, pushing you all the way. Yeah, and they're saying, do more of this. Cheat us more. We want you to lie to us. And I had, there's a moment in the book where I had to decide whether I was going to take the money and run with it or walk out. You know that moment in the book? I'm, I've read it, yeah, but... So, and I, I took the money because, number one, I was in the middle of a situation where this is the, was the big payoff of the whole experience. And I was given a choice, and it was, again, a wink, wink, nod, nod thing. They, they did not say, are you going to cheat these people or are you going to stand by your conscience and leave here and walk out? It's up to you. I remember that. In the yeah. Book. And, I, and I said, well, I could walk out, but that's going to be a really bad ending to the book, you know. So I said, okay, I'll do this, but I'm remembering what they put on the plate in front of me, and I'm going to share that with the world. Basically, they, it's com, uh, complicence. Uh, what do they call it in psychology? Complicency uh, testing? Where oh, you, yeah, I don't know. Well, you... you you bait, you build up, you bait and switch, you bait and switch, and then there, it's a complicity issue where they're asking you to comply with them or you're going to lose everything. You're going to lose your momentum. So and it was a all tough this, thing to this was all conflicted. research for the book. Yeah. yeah. Your entire career was research <clears throat> for the book, basically, in this. Night. Yes, it was. That's a good point. I think my entire career. And you knew that was starting to get out, to this I'm going to start like this and I'm going to write a book about it when I get done. Yeah, I said to myself, I am going to climb to the top of this mountain, no matter how awful it may be, and I'm going to be the world's greatest psychic. Because it says in there, yes. at one point they sent me a letter. <clears throat> I'll never forget it. I'm sitting in my living room, and I get the mail. It drops through the slot, and it's a letter from the Psychic Friends Network. And it says right on the envelope, it says, we're looking for the world's greatest psychic. I'm like, okay, let's go. You know, I go, I am going to take these people for a ride. And I immediately called him up. I said, when's the interview? Because you won't find anybody better than me. And they're like, whoa, okay. And then I, I got my mentalism stuff together. And I, I played the game, see? So I convinced them that I was the real deal. All right, I'm not going to offend. Well, actually, I hope I probably, we're probably offending whoever. Are we saying. offending people? I don't know. I don't care. God, actually, I, hope I don't so. care. <laughs> Well, I don't want to offend you right now, but I have to say this. I mean, 
it sounds fantastic that you started this whole thing with the intent of a book. I can see getting into it and saying, yeah. you know what, this is going to make a great book. No, no, no. But it just seems fantastic to think that you went through all that work. No, no. I, I had an end goal in mind because I knew that it was going to end and it wasn't going to end nicely. I knew that it was that, that I, 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 my conscience was intact from the beginning, right? I knew that it wasn't going to end well. It was going to end with me having to pull the plug because I couldn't do it. From the beginning, I knew it was a sham. So I did the best I could, and I said to myself, you're going to turn, they're giving you lemons, you're going to make lemonade out of it. The book is going to be the distilled evidence that's going to be out there for people to read and learn about. So there were moments when I said, this is a blast. I'm enjoying this. So I wasn't always like creeping around like secret agent or anything. You no, know, I, I, was let, I was letting my life roll with it and playing this game. And it was hilarious. I mean, the people that I met and the things that happened, the things they put me up to and tested me and wanted to see if I would do this or do that, the radio things, all that stuff. It, it was crazy. It is. It can be a difficult read at times, too. Though. Yeah, well, so, I'm not I mean, a writer, really. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> it can be depressing in a way, not only yeah. because of the lows that you hit, oh, man, but the people you. that you're talking to yeah. are desperate. Yeah, like the woman whose eye got gouged out. Yeah, well, we don't need to. <laughs> we don't won't go into that one. That's yeah, okay, that's a good one. So, um, or you know, women that call you for advice, they can't get out of their own way. I, I, he I hesitate to cast aspersions like that, but you know, my boyfriend's beating me. Should I leave? Right. What a question. And right. and you're calling a psychic hotline to yeah. get the answer to that question. But I would say that probably. 80% of the calls that I took, 80%, that's a lot, were people who were at their wits end. And they really shouldn't have been calling a psychic. They should have been calling an 800 helpline, like a suicide line or a, a, a abuse hotline or a drug hotline. And I kept a log of all those 800 numbers. And one of the services that I did is if I felt like it was somebody who, where I was out of my depth, Instead of just stringing them along by saying, well, the cards say things are going to get better, I'd say, this is an 800 number for a woman's shelter. You need to call this right away. And that's, that's what I did. And would you break out of the psychic for that? Or would yes. you say, as a psychic, I see this is the best decision for you? That's pretty much how I would calculate that. I would say, you I see that things are going to get better, but only if you take this number down and go to a woman's shelter right now. No kidding. Yeah, and then a lot of times I just hear click and hang up. Do you have any way of, you have no way of knowing what happens, right? Only the one story that's in there. Okay. And I'm you not going to talk about that. It. No, because that's, that's kind of the, the payoff of the whole thing. There is a story in there where I saved a life by accident, more or less. And you... Um, Totally unintentional. Again, you've said earlier today, and you said it here, it's all a ruse. Yeah. The cold reading, you've yeah. talked about that. And you're a good performer. I, I hope. hope so. No, no. I mean that. I, well, I'll tell oh, you mean I'm a good, I'm on no, the side of good? Or? No, 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 no. You're a great performer. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just saw, I, I don't know if you call this show or not, Yeah. but you're a good speaker. Thank um, you. You yeah. relate well to the audience. Yeah. And the readings that you did, were very interesting, of yeah. course, and they were dead on. I don't yeah. know if you want to talk about that part of it. Well, I used hot readings. Which is? Hot readings is getting information on audience members before the show. And this is different, that you did it differently than just having people milling about in the crowd beforehand. Yeah, I went on Facebook. Because I had actual names and I researched people on Facebook So for this, made notes. So for this workshop that you did, of course, yeah. everybody signed up for it. Right. And to sign up for it, you have to use your name. That's right. Which, and they also, so all I do is we pick five or six, because you only need three or four, maybe five dead-on hits like that to convince most audiences. It was a tough crowd, though. Of course. But I knew that going in. So I went in, I went on Facebook, and <clears throat> first thing I had to do was get a picture of that person so I could identify them when I saw them in the crowd. And then I made up mnemonic cue, a cue sheet. And I just memorized it. And then I went like this and said... Yeah, you put a little bit of the acting to it, right? That's what it's all about. 
you can't just pausing, make... rattle off the information. It's like, what? You know? You're supposed to make it look difficult. And that's another thing that I think today's modern mediums don't don't give any advice here to make they... people <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Don't start you know? coaching the younger generation. Yeah, keep doing a bad, re a bad cold reading. I, I, you know, don't learn anything from me, please. Um, <laughs> let's just talk. Let's move on to the committee for skeptical inquiry. Yes. Now, so what? So how do you get here? Well, uh, like I said, I, you know, uh, fooling people with magic and and mentalism is just not very satisfying to me anymore but i'd rather talk to people like you but my question is you you don't call up the cfo and say hey i see you're having a convention i want to be part of it i no, mean no they call me how do they know that you're a good guy i mean they don't really there's a lot of contention there but lately <laughs> i've been fr fairly lucky no i was a, i was a member of the uh uh IIG, which is the Independent Investigations Group, which oh, okay. is affiliated with CFI for about six, seven years, I think. Okay, I didn't know that. How many years? I don't think that's in the book, is it? No, because that was uh, later. Okay. That was after I finished with all that. I washed my hands and moved on. Very cathartic. So You know, that book was very cathartic. Okay, so this book actually represents the end of that portion of your life. Yeah. And now you're totally into this side, section of it. Well, no, I still love to give readings. I'd rather do a palm reading than just about anything in the world, believe it or not. <laughs> but not because I want to rip somebody off, just because I think that it's a fascinating uh, entertainment. Uh -huh. So a lot of psychics are like, oh, he's still doing readings? Oh, you know, he needs to decide which side he's on. Forget that. I don't, I'm just not that hardcore. So speaking of deciding which side you're on, <laughs> what's the, you know, do you, you made, you must have made some friends while you were doing the research for this book. Yeah, I still have psychics that are friends. And so the book comes out, or you leave the business, so to speak, the book comes out, people read it. I mean, have you gotten some... Psychics that I know won't read that book, unless I give it to them. <laughs> they won't spend the money, you mean? No, they, they don't want to hear about what's going on in my life. They're all, they're, most of them are sociopaths. They're totally involved with their own, their own survival. Sociopaths or narcissistic or? Yeah, <laughs> all that. I mean, that, I so mean. So there is a point, speaking of narcissism, as the performer, I mean, you love that feedback from the person. They're kind of dependent on you, right? They you are, mean the, the sitter or the, the sitter, audience? The sitter. Uh, on, the, on the audience, I mean, you're getting I think a, that's part of it. As I any think, performer, I, mean, I, mean, I grew up. I grew up as a kid. I wanted attention. I, you know, I did magic when I was like eleven years old, and I, I just, yeah, I like to be the center of attention. It's an ego thing, but I also, the part of it where I might actually be able to help somebody, that enters into it. Believe it or not, it, it really, it really is satisfying. Like I said in the lecture today. To have somebody come back a year later and tell me that I really helped change their life for the better. I mean, when you get that kind of, you don't get that with magic. You know, you do a magic trick, the red handkerchief, it comes out green. You never get somebody come back a year later and go, when you did that thing with the red handkerchief, you changed my whole life, you know. It's like music, same thing. When music emotionally changes somebody, every time they hear that song, they feel the same sort of thing, you know. You know, I teach a lot of lessons, and if somebody comes back and says I changed their life, I will be horrified. Uh, first thing I, I, I tell people, don't, you know, <laughs> don't please don't listen life. to what I, you know. <laughs> but, but that's the difference. I mean, that's why there, it, there's an addiction on both sides. There's an addiction on the side of the people that want to hear about themselves. And then I think with a lot of psychics, not necessarily me, because I'm not doing anywhere <laughs> that kind of stuff like I did before, there was an addiction to to want to feel like you would help somebody. And then you also cross that line where it's like, you're convincing yourself that you helped that person, but you really took their money. That's the conflicted part. Well, it's also conflicted because when you said, because when you just said, when someone comes back after a year and says, tells me that I changed their life. For the better. For the better. Yeah. And it just then, happened frequently, believe it or not. But it's, it wasn't a but it happened anyway. It happened anyway. Yeah, right. Might have. So you're going to take credit. For, you'll take credit for that. I, for them to share that with me, I, it just feels good. 
It's like going like the doctor when you come back to the doctor and say, you know, you my toes healed. Thank you. you know? Okay. But okay. <laughs> now that you phrase it that way, it makes yeah. more sense. Yeah. Um, but there's still but guilt. But you're not saying that I've... You, um, you changed my life through your psychic abilities. You just changed my life because you said something and it worked Cause out. Because I, I, cause I reached out, you reached out to me, and I, I try to reach back. Because what more is there? If a psychic exchange, if it's, if it's a good one, both people leave happy. I mean, that's one of the things I learned right away. You give people a bad reading, you're not going to stay in business for very long. Right. I mean, I think I, I, I'm like... I'm sometimes involved in certain things like that. And I've heard a medium say, I don't ever tell anybody anything bad. Right. And I'm thinking, well, geez, I kind of want to know right. something but, bad. But I, I never said that I, myself. What I would say is, I will not, I'm not going to, because sometimes people sit down, they're like this, and they go, don't tell me anything bad. You know, it's like, relax. I tell them, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything bad. I wouldn't be sitting here. They wouldn't have hired me to come to this party tonight if I told people bad things. However, if I see a fork in the road that I might be able to help you avoid something that could be unpleasant or that you might be able to change, I will tell you that. See? But I don't go, you're going to die, you know, like Sylvia Brown. I'm sorry, but the cancer is, you know, it's not going to be able to be cured. Yeah. That doesn't help anybody. Mm, I under, totally understand you wouldn't want to, because people won't want to come back if they hear Because <laughs> you're going to die anyway. I mean, right. you, could say, you could say you're going to die eventually, you know. But no, people, people want to hear something uplifting. But you can't sugarcoat it so much that it's just sickly sweet, because people just feel like, ah, that person was just jerking my chain. You have to have a genuine concern for what's going on in their life. And then... For me, I had to like make a judgment, and I mentioned this in the lecture tonight. You, you kind of say, what would I do in my life? See? So there's nothing supernatural about that. It's like, what is my common sense? If I was in this person's position, what would I do to make my life better? You know? Stop drinking, stop eating too much. I don't know, whatever it is. Just common sense. And we can, there's nothing supernatural about it. You just said that. So... If there is, I don't, I'm not aware of it. Well, define supernatural. In other words, it's coming from my brain, which is, as far as I know, a naturally right. operating. <laughs> as far as I know, too. I'm hoping it is. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, supernatural means something that's above and away from what's natural. Yes. Right. So, and, and all it is is a matter of science and, and perception. What's, what's normal to one person can be super normal to another person, depending on their education and what their background is, their religion, their, you know, all these things come into play. And you can relate, again, back to music. That guy is a super normal guitarist. How right. does he have that skill? Right. But it's not supernatural. It's and super like in normal. music, in, in music, because I, I play the drums, right? Okay. And so when, I, when I've had the most in-the-zone experiences playing drums was when I learned to let go. That's a common theme, yeah. Yeah, when I tried to stiffen up and make it happen. So again, it's like learning to let go with another human being like that. That's a really amazing thing. Like, I do it and, it, and it gets them to do it. I mentioned in the lecture tonight, sometimes I'll have somebody sit down like this, but within five minutes, and when they're leaning in, then I know that, they're right in the palm of my hand. So it's, you know, it's like a drummer that can play jazz and relaxed, very hard to find. If I see a drummer that's sweating, I'm not interested, you know? Although Elvin Jones sweat like it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Did you ever see him play? But you know what I mean. Yeah, though. I do. I do. It's just, it, it's still can, effortless. They can have that look, you know, like it's they're that. just riding on it. And that's, that's really what you're doing. You're riding on words and you give, you're selling hope and you're hoping that they tune into that same wavelength and they start to feel that hope and then you end on a end on a high note and they leave and if you're lucky they take your card if you're not you're done well let's hopefully we end on a high note right now How's are that we sound? done i could go on for hours but well i'm it's already 6:30, isn't let's, it let's do uh, let me sum up here though okay, anyway all right. so i don't usually talk too much about books because a lot of we want people to buy them. Okay, I'll, 
<laughs> just shameless, I guess. So, Mark Edward, Psychic yes. Blues. Psychic Blues. You get it's it on Amazon. It's a fantastic read. Um, and it's, go it, to my it's website, It's a difficult too. read. Yeah, well, what is your website? Would you like to website, mention? Website is uh, www.themarkedward.com. And there's 15 other books at my website that are not that are self self published. That is the only mainstream. Okay, um, and actually, people do talk about books and they give out websites. I do a lot of musicians that give yeah. out websites. So this is not. I mean, I talked a lot about your book because I read it and was very interested in. But most yeah. of the people that I talked to on the show, I've read their book. I've done a lot of research into them, so I can right. have a conversation with them. So, yeah. So I'm not just. Um, this is no infomercial, so do you know? No, it is not an infomercial. It's and we just, have never I just met before. happened to have my book. That's all. <laughs> no, we never met before. Thank you. My Mark pleasure. Edward, um, Brian Thank you, Kirby, sir. 502 Conversations. Yep. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Good conversation. Thank you all very right. much. Okay.